Welcome back everyone. In this video I'll be covering 5 things you absolutely must do before starting Arma 3 in 2023. These tips will help give you the best experience possible thanks to the community flourishing over the last 10 years. If this video helps you in any way or you have your own tip that you'd like to bestow upon the masses, comment it down below and please consider sending a JDAM through that like and subscribe button. Your interaction with my video is what keeps my channel growing, so thank you all for your consideration and for your time. We've gone through a ton of trial and error over the last decade, and many incredible community members and mod makers have helped tens of thousands of players enhance their experiences, so let's get right into the things you need to do before starting Arma 3. At number 5 is the easiest one, and I can't believe I'm still saying it, but you absolutely must put Arma 3 on a solid state drive. It's 2023. Hard disk drives should be a thing of the past. Arma 3 being placed on a solid state drive will save you tons of loading time and will increase your performance overall while in game. It's honestly a must do, otherwise you'll need to play on all low settings and man, no one's got time for that. And number four is visit and familiarize yourself with the Steam Workshop. This page will yield you, honestly, thousands of hours of enjoyment. Mod makers are constantly pouring better and better mods of all kinds to enhance and broaden the scope of possibilities in the Arma 3 sandbox. Everything from quality of life improvements to new vehicles, planes, weapons, and even entirely new terrains to explore and destroy your enemies on. I'm going to warn you, mods are a gateway drug. You will absolutely get addicted to the ingenious things this community has and continues to funnel into the workshop daily. If you followed me for a while, then you know that I use a ton of mods in my videos. And even though many of them weren't developed by full teams of developers like Bohemia, they are still gorgeous and add truly endless possibilities to your gameplay. Many mod makers have even created entirely new factions for you to use with their own custom vehicles, camo schemes, and often their own lore, some of which fit into the 2035 setting and many that are based in the real world. There's even mods going back to 50 BC with the Roman legions, all the way to the year 40,000 with the Warhammer 40k mods, and literally everything in between. Once you dive into the modding scene, you'll see exactly why Arma 3 has survived and flourished for 10 years and maintained its immense popularity even as new tactical games like Squad and Hell Let Loose have come online but just can't capture that same sandbox feel of Arma. At number 3 is what will most likely be many people's first mod download and that is Zeus Enhanced. Zeus is an in-game editor that works while the game is actually running. It is an, essentially an extension of the 3D Eden editor, except you can actually manipulate the game world while you're playing. The base game Zeus was awesome, however it did have some limitations in functionality. Enter Zeus Enhanced, a mod that completely revitalized Zeus by adding more quality of life features than I can hope to list. Just know that it is a must-have mod if you feel like opening up the Zeus interface and playing around with missions as they happen. There are some players that only ever play as Zeus and let their friends experience their dynamic missions carried out in real time. Zeus Enhanced brings in just a ton of quality of life updates and it makes Zeusing a breeze. And number two is downloading a visual effects mod like Blast Core, Photon VFX, or Arma FXP to name a couple. These mods completely change the look of explosions, fire, and smoke effects. It's important to know that you really should only run one of these at a time to avoid compatibility issues and performance decreases. But man, I can't recommend these mods enough. I personally use Blastcore compiled by Niche, which is the base Blastcore mod with enhanced smoke effects and longer lasting smoke pillars. A quick comparison of these explosions can be seen here versus the vanilla explosion. While the vanilla stuff is completely serviceable and balanced to save on performance, personally, I'd like to see bombastic explosions and I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of performance for it. It's entirely up to you what you want to see in game, and you're free to give all of these mods a download and see which one fits your playstyle and tolerances. And at number one is reducing some of the more non-critical graphic settings to boost your frame rate resulting in a much better overall experience. It is no secret that Arma 3's optimization is a point of contention for many, so much so that Bohemia Interactive even established a whole wiki page explaining the graphic settings and what they affect. 
By giving this wiki a look, you'll quickly see how CPU intensive Arma 3 is and can adjust your settings accordingly. First thing to do in the video options is to hit auto detect. This mechanism is very good at detecting the best settings based off of your hardware. And even though it may select something higher than what you would previously had, you should leave it because this engine actually runs better with certain settings set higher. And this feature knows it better than you do. Next, ensure your object view distance is roughly one third of your overall view distance. Object view distance is the CPU killer and will tank your FPS faster than anything else. There's no point in making the engine render things you can't even see. And for most players on the ground, you won't see farther than one and a half to two kilometers. So bring it down. I fly a lot, so I have mine a little higher and is also why my picture in picture setting is so high. So I can see through targeting pods inside aircraft better. However, this is also a huge FPS killer as it makes the game render a whole other game display. The next thing I do to greatly enhance my FPS is under anti-aliasing and post-processing. Turn your bloom down to 20 and your radial blur and rotational blur down to zero. This will save you a ton of FPS when looking around. Will it look as pretty? Uh, probably not when you're looking around, but it's blurry, so what does it matter? Additionally, this is entirely up to you. Many players turn full screen anti-aliasing off as it massively improves performance. However, your edges and things at a distance will start to look pretty jagged and warped. So if you prefer looks over performance, then leave this on. Otherwise, you can turn it off. I want to recommend a video to you by Nanner, formerly known as Knighton, who breaks down all of these settings in detail and will help double your FPS, if not more. Link is down in the description below. And that's all I've got for this video, guys. I hope you took something away that helps you make the decision to buy this incredible game, or maybe you've been playing for years and took something from this. I want to give a massive shout out to my supporters on Patreon as well as those Chad channel members. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support of me and my channel. You really don't know what it means to me. And of course, I want to thank you, the viewer, for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you all for your time and for watching, and I will see you in the next video.